Hey everybody, I'm Bob and welcome to Hangar 77. Today the uh, space station is going to be flying overhead, so I thought why don't we take a listen to it. Now I know I've made a video about this in the past, uh, but I thought I might have made it a little too complicated. Today we're just going to use a handheld radio that can pick up the 2 meter amateur radio band, and we're just going to use a standard antenna. Uh, the space station is going to be coming from this direction, so it's going to be 0 degrees on the horizon, and as it goes over it's going to go about directly overhead, so about 90 degrees overhead, and then it's going to end in that position over there. And so the only thing I'm going to do to help receive the signal is to uh, move the radio like this. We want the signal to hit the uh, broad face of the antenna. That's how it will receive best. So as it's overhead, I'll actually be holding the radio like this because the signal will be coming down. You don't want to point the tip at the space station. You want the, like the broad side of the antenna. So that's all I'm going to use. Standard antenna, simple handheld radio. Let's wait for the station and uh, let's listen to the, uh, the astronaut up there. He's going to be talking to a school in Georgia, so let's hear what he has to say. heard it. things 
So everything, including daily activities like eating or washing your, uh, doing personal hygiene, like brushing your teeth and uh, going to the bathroom, everything is a little bit harder in space. that launch board system. 
lost him and it saved his life. There you have it, pretty cool. We got to hear the astronaut talk to the students as he went across the sky. We heard the signal pick up over in this direction then it was pretty strong for the whole time. And then when he got under the uh, horizon there, we definitely lost him there before he wrapped it up. Didn't get to hear the call sign, uh, but definitely uh, we know who that was. So, <laughs> very cool. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you guys next time. Well, it's tomorrow, or what you just saw was yesterday, and the space station is going to be making another pass and having another contact with the school. This time it's in Texas. Now, it's not very often that the space station makes back-to-back -back school contacts in a range that you can actually listen to in the same location, so I couldn't resist the opportunity to bring out the big guns and see, if, uh, see what we could hear this time. The pass is going to be about the same as yesterday. I'm going to be starting again from this direction and ending in this direction. The difference is going to be it's only about a 45 degree pass, so it's only going to be up about this high in the sky, whereas yesterday's pass, it was directly overhead. I think it was 89 degrees, something like that. So the space station is going to be passing overhead shortly. Let's see what we can hear.
science for the benefit of life on Earth, and that science ranges from biology, medical, uh, chemistry, material science. We do all kinds of experiments. We have almost 300 going on at any given time over the course of an entire mission. And uh, it's very exciting stuff. And I think some of the most exciting, because I'm a medical doctor, a lot in the realm of medicine that helps us understand how the human body works when we come up and live for a long period of time in microgravity. Well, Katie, in terms of science, it would be hard to pick just one thing, but I could tell you about another payload that we have on the exterior of the space station that we just recently finished or finished working on as one of part of our spacewalks, and it's called the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, and it's looking for something called dark matter and antimatter that helps us understand the origin of our universe. Believe it or not, Cade, I'm able to use voice over internet telephone, so I can call my family on the telephone, and I'm able to call them at least once a day. And then once a week, we also get a teleconference that looks a lot like FaceTime on your phone, and I'm able to see my family's face uh, on my computer screen once a week. So we have really good ways to stay connected with our friends and family. ways that we prevent injury is we make sure that we're very healthy when we get up here but if we were to get a serious injury I happen to be a medical doctor and so a lot of times I can be helpful to my crewmates we also have a lot of medications and first aid supplies up here and if I'm ever feeling like I need to get to the advice of a doctor on the ground we can reach out through telephone and teleconference to speak to any kind of medical specialty. And if somebody was so seriously injured that their life was in jeopardy, we can always get back into our spacecraft and return to the Earth. Well, we have a great system of food up here, and we have space food that comes from all over the world, all the different space agencies that participate in the International Space Station program provide food, and so we have terrific variety, all types of different foods, and I would say, you know, they have us test all of the food on the ground before we come up here to the space station, and I think that it all tastes about the same. I, my favorite by far is desserts. I like desserts and candy, and one of our resupply vehicles recently brought a resupply of candy that I was in desperate need of. I really enjoy that very much. Well, Jordan, it's hard to remember everything that we have to remember, so we often rely on Writing, having it written down in a procedure, a set of instructions that tell us exactly what to do. And then we have mission control talking to us from the ground, and we can ask them questions all the time. We would not be able to figure out how to do everything on this really complicated vehicle without the help of a giant support team on the ground that can talk to us on the radio, and then books and books worth of instructions, procedures that tell us exactly how to do everything. We have an instruction book for everything we do. Katie, if uh, you're talking about the physical part of the International Space Station, I think most astronauts would agree that the cupola, which is our, our 360 degree window that looks down at the Earth, but well, we have multiple windows on the Earth, and I would say any module that's got a window in it is our favorite because that's one of our favorite things to do is look at the Earth. I mean, one of the most interesting things that we recycle is that we actually take our urine and we collect it into containers and then put it through a machine that turns it back into drinking water. So that is a really great way, a uh, great uh, demonstration of how we recycle on the ISS. Our trash we collect in bags and then we put it on some of the cargo vehicles that come to visit us.
after we unload all the cargo, our trash goes on it, and then that cargo vehicle will return to Earth, burn up the burn up in the atmosphere with our trash in it. <laughs> well, Parker, one of the things I mentioned already was look out the window. That's definitely a lot of fun, but a lot of the same things that we do for entertainment on Earth, like we do get still occasionally watch television, listen to music, uh, watch movies, and we just enjoy each other's company. I also love calling people on the phone because they get a real kick out of getting a phone call from the International Space Station. Nathan, we can see clouds very well, and we can actually tell how high the clouds stick up by the way that the sun casts shadow on them, and sometimes we see really large storm clouds, and we can even see lightning jumping from cloud to cloud, especially during a night pass. Ethan, that's a great question, and I don't know that I can answer that easily, but I can tell you that the things that I love about being an astronaut is it's a lot of fun, first of all, to be part of a really great team. And that's not just a team of other astronauts and my crew that I'm on board with, but like the crew that I mentioned, or the team on the ground that takes care of us, that keeps watch over us, and allows us uh, to, enables this space station to fly. So being part of that team is one of the best parts, but it's also fun to be an explorer, represent my country, represent the International Space Station, or re represent the entire International Space Station program. All right, very cool. We got the call sign of both the school uh, station and the uh, space station there. So I think they wrapped it up um, near the end of the pass here. I think we would have been able to still listen for a while there, but I think he uh, wrapped it up there. So we'll just listen to see if there's anything else. It's very cool. I always like getting the call signs. That's cool. Okay, very cool. Well, there was a lot less trains, planes, and automobiles in the ambient noise this time, so that made it a little bit more <laughs> enjoyable to listen to. And I think we were able to listen to the conversation for a little bit longer this time with this antenna, which I would expect, because you're really uh, putting some ears on the radio. You're really able to direct what you're listening to. I think I got ahead of it a little bit in the beginning of that one. Uh, the signal strength wasn't as strong as I thought, and I think it's because I got ahead of the space station in the sky. So then you might have noticed I backed up and the signal strength came up. So very cool. I really enjoyed listening to the space station. I hope you guys did too. We'll see you guys next time.